Windows 11 22H2. It is the brand new Windows client operating system that is set to drop in October or roughly October of this year. And basically Windows 11 22H2 is the first major upgrade to Windows 11 since Windows 11 was GA in October of last year. Many things to expect from this new Windows 11 22H2 version. There is a brand new application security module that is included in Windows 11 22H2 called Smart App Control. We're going to take a look at what it is, what it does, and a couple of limitations, unfortunately. Stick around, let's talk about this. It seems like ransomware, malicious applications, unwanted applications, potentially unwanted applications, it seems like there is no end to uh, malicious applications that attackers and cyber criminals are trying to use today to compromise business critical environments. Well, Microsoft is continuing to take various steps to combat the plague of ransomware. As you can see in the remote desktop that I have a connection to currently, I have a Windows 11 22H2 Insider Preview uh, build that I installed uh, by an ISO file. So if we just take a look at a WinVer, uh, you can uh, see here that we've got Microsoft Windows version 22H2, Windows 11 22H2. So Windows 11 22H2 is the first major upgrade that Microsoft has went live with, uh, GA so to speak. And you might think of it back in the day as what we would have thought of as a service pack, like a proper SP1. Uh, that is what Windows 11 22H2 is uh, in, a, in effect because it has major new features, enhancements across the board. And one of those enhancements is the smart app control. So if I navigate to uh, settings for Windows 11 and we go to privacy and security, we go to Windows security. Uh, now we go to app and browser control. There is a new listing. Uh, as you can see, this was not here before 22H2, and that is called Smart App Control. And notice it mentions that it's enhanced protection from untrusted apps. So if you click into the Smart App Control settings, it's fairly watered down as far as the nerd knobs, if we want to call them that, are concerned. There's not a lot of configuration that you can do here. Basically, we've got an on, an evaluation, and an off. And as you can see, it defaults to evaluation uh, mode for smart app control. Now, many of these, uh, what I'm gonna call them application whitelisting uh, type security applications, they work by creating a baseline of activity. So in other words, you can uh, run this security application in a monitor mode, uh, so to speak, and it uh, creates that baseline of what normal activity is. Let's talk about what the limitations are with smart app control and some of the gotchas that frankly I can see as being a deal breaker for uh, many enterprise environments uh, when thinking about how they can leverage this for ransomware protection. Smart app control can only be turned on in a freshly installed version of Windows 11 22H2. So upgrades are out. Um, not really sure why Microsoft is so hard and fast on this. However, they make mention that with Smart App Control, they want to guarantee that this device, this operating system has not been tampered with. And what better way to do that than to basically restrict you from turning it on, uh, the protection on, in a freshly installed version of Windows. So that's number one. You've got a freshly installed Windows. It's got to be a new installation. It then runs in evaluation mode. Uh, now, as we've alluded to, evaluation mode is like this monitor mode that allows you to, uh, or allows smart app control to take a look at the system, make sure, as Microsoft says uh, in their documentation, make sure that smart app control is not going to get in the way of your work too much, and that is quoting Microsoft, 
uh, there with Smart App Control. But that's what evaluation mode does. And I've honestly had this workstation running for a couple or three days now, and it's still in evaluation mode. Uh, I don't recall seeing any documentation on the number of days that it uh, requires for evaluation mode to deem Smart App Control to be viable for your system. However, uh, it is still running after a few days. And I would imagine probably a week to 10 days, uh, perhaps, uh, just going by some other enterprise security, application security platforms that I'm aware of. So in application mode, it gathers a baseline. Then it will automatically flag Smart App Control into the on mode. Now, here is the other caveat to Smart App Control. This uh, configuration uh, dialog box is not something you want to uh, take half-heartedly. In other words, you can't go in and flip Smart App Control to on and then say, no, I'm, I'm not really sure I want to flip it back to off and then I want to flip it back to the on setting again. You can't do that. Once you turn on Smart App Control, if you turn it off, you can only turn it on by reinstalling Windows. So let me say that again. Once you turn it on, if you turn it off, you will have to reinstall Windows before you can turn Smart App Control back on. Now that can potentially, I think, be a deal breaker for the enterprise. Now this is, thinking about this, this is a new feature in 22H2. Might Microsoft allow this to be configured more in the future? Perhaps. Uh, another thing that uh, is going to be a hard sell for the enterprise, in my opinion, is the fact that with Smart App Control, you cannot uh, whitelist a particular application. So many enterprise environments may have a custom application or a, uh, a uh, in-house application that they know is not properly signed or that flagged by many of security solutions out there just by some of the behaviors that it does. However, it's a legitimate app. Microsoft mentions with Smart App Control, there is no way to whitelist uh, legitimate applications that you may be running in-house. So it's an all or nothing uh, event with Smart App Control. Either you turn it on and take the false positives with the uh, positives uh, proper, or you just can't run Smart App Control. How does it work? Uh, even though those are what I would call some deal breakers for the enterprise environment, what is it exactly? Well, Smart App Control is a cloud service. Uh, it works off of, no doubt, Microsoft's AI and ML algorithms that they have running in their security cloud uh, service. So it looks at uh, applications, at binaries. It can tell, uh, no doubt, probably from some intent of the application, seeing what the intent of the application is, what its behavior is. But also one of the big things, again, as I mentioned earlier, is is the application signed properly? Does it have a code signing certificate that the uh, application code has been signed with? If it hasn't, then it's going to get stopped by Smart App Control. It's a step in the right direction, and I think that as Smart App Control matures, perhaps, and Microsoft reevaluates customer needs and sees what customers actually want out of this solution, then this can potentially get into the area of where many of the uh, enterprise solutions, third-party solutions, the pay-for solutions uh, come into play with application whitelisting and uh, application security. Uh, I do think this is a really cool new feature that can provide a tremendous amount of protection from ransomware, from malicious applications, potentially unwanted applications attackers try to use to compromise uh, client operating, operating systems in particular. What do you think about Smart App Control? Uh, what do you think about Windows 11 22H2? Uh, please do let me know in the comments. Uh, like the video if you've liked this uh, quick overview of what Smart App Control is, uh, what it does, and how you can use it, how you can turn it on as well as those gotchas with the solution, at least as we know it today and as this uh, preview build uh, is presenting Smart App Control to us. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. I hope you subscribe to the channel. Please like the video, and I will see you guys soon.